Yetis. It's Captain Jackson Kyle here. Happy Good Friday. I have a fantastic lesson lined up for you today. I'll be teaching you how to play a sea shanty named Sailor's Hornpipe. It is a classic jig. Um, it's not a pirate song per se, but uh, give me credit. I, mean, I couldn't find a sailor's hat. This will this will have to do. Um, uh, first a joke. What did the pirate say on his 80th birthday? Arm 80. Alrighty, and this is how it goes. For this lesson, I'll be teaching you how to play the main melody and the chords that go underneath it. The chords and strumming pattern are at an intermediate level, and the melody, depending on what speed you play it, ranges from intermediate uh, to advanced. For the melody, you will need to know the scale shape for one and a half octaves of C major at the eighth fret. Here, I've provided this. Um, the numbers in the chord diagram indicate what fingers to use. Of course, one being your index finger, two being your middle finger, three being your ring finger, and four being your pinky. Um, there is also a quick key change in this song, um, just for a bar which I haven't written the scale diagram for because it is so fleeting. Um, so in that part of the song, I will just guide you through it as it comes up. So here is the scale, one and a half octaves of C major at the eighth fret to begin. Here's how it goes. Starting with your pinky on that high C there, we'll go C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G. Now going back up, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So just run that up and down a couple of times just to get yourself comfortable because that will be the majority of the work that you will do in order to learn the melody. Fantastic. Okay, so on to the song. I've provided the tablature for the song here. The first two notes you play with your pinky and your third finger on the 8th and 7th fret of the E string begin on beat 4. Um, known as a pickup beat just before the, the first bar of the song properly, properly kicks in. Um, so it's like 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, Okay, so going into it here, you can see the first couple of notes, starting with two, two eighth notes and then a couple of quarters there. So this is the first little bit. I recommend using a pick for this song, um, as there is a lot of, of, of picking involved, um, a lot of down and up strokes. For instance, for this first part here, in order to, to be able to play this, you will have to be able to alternate pick. So the first, the, the eight there, that first note with your pinky, is a down stroke, and then the seven is an up, and then a, a down stroke again. Okay, on to the next. Eight, six, five, eight. Try that a few times. Okay, and then to make that next note, 
because the eighth fret is where your pinky is, you will have to do a very quick bar with your pinky to get to that E string. That might take a little bit of practice, but um, this is how you do it. Try that a few times, and then to continue on with that. After you've played 8, 7, 8 with your pinky and third finger, you have to slide your pinky up to the 12th fret. Try and fill as much of that as you can in. Giving that another go there. Um, and this is this is where we are at a, a very um, a very fleeting key change here, going from C major up to, to D major. Where you are with your, your your pinky on that 12th fret there, you play 10 and 9 with your big finger and your index. Like so. Then we are changing positions again, putting your index finger on the seventh fret of the G string. So I'll go th that whole part goes like this. It's a little bit of a handful, you do have to move your hand around a little bit, you're jumping in and out of positions. Um, but that's the only time you really do have to do that, um, just because of that, that that very slight key change there. Okay, now to to finish off the first half. It is important to note that every every new line does start on the fourth beat of the bar rather than the first beat. Um, it's it's just the nature of this this tune, um, as you can see there. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm going to play that entire thing together now from the start at a relatively slow pace. So one, two, three, four. That's it. Fantastic. Okay, on to the, the line that finishes off the first part of the melody. We go like this. Starting on beat four again, one, two, three. Okay, that's just a run down, a, a descending line, starting at the high C. Um, I'll note quickly here, back to the right hand technique, the, the picking pattern there should be down, up, down, up. then from the 5th fret of the E string with your index finger. It's important to break this up into, into bite-sized chunks here. There's a slight position shift here on the 6th fret of the B string. 6 to 5 and then 7 and 5 on the G. You can either play 7 and 5 on the G with your third finger index and then slide your index to 4. Or you can go with your little finger, sorry, you can go with your pinky, big finger on the 5th and then index on the fourth if you if you don't want to slide. Both you will find comfort in doing. It's up to you which position you'd like. I'm going to play both for you right now. Or try both and see what works for you. Finishing on finishing that last little phrase there on the seventh fret of the D with your pinky. And then for the jump back up to home, we're going to be, instead of playing in a linear scale fashion now, there is going to be a couple of jumps in thirds. 
starting on the 5th fret of the D string, jumping up to the 4th of the G. Okay, there's a, so there's a bit of a bit of string jumping here. Try those three. Um, for some, this bit might require just a little bit of practice, more so than some of the other scale lines. Another option here on the seventh fret of the G string indicated is to use your pinky. Um, you can at that time also try to use your third finger there if it's more comfortable for the remaining notes to play. I'll show, I'll demonstrate. That's with the pinky. And this is with your third finger. Both will work, both you'll find comfort in doing. It's up to you which one to use. Okay, we're nearly there. I'm gonna try that run again. Okay, fantastic. So that is the first half of the melody. If you have learnt that so far, and you can play that, you've learnt almost the entire thing. The second time round that it repeats the melody, there's just a few slight changes, and I'll show you those right now. So instead of starting again like this, the first note for the second half of this melody it starts on the fifth fret, as you can see there, starts on the fifth fret of the B string and the 8th fret of the B with your index and pinky. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is a little slightly challenging bit here for the picking. Um, on the first beat of the new bar, you're playing a high C with your pinky and you're playing a G with your pinky as well on the B string. If you can see that there, you can see how I'm rolling. And also with my right hand, you can see on the E string, I'm picking down and on the B string, I'm picking up. So playing that is just one thing you can spend a bit of time practicing. I certainly did myself when I first learnt this, going like this. Um, main reason being because it is quite a jagged line. It is simply just a C arpeggio, but the fingers that you end up having to use in order to play it properly um, will just require a, a small amount of practice. So I'm going to I'm going to cycle that just for a few times. So one, two, three, four. Once you've done that, once you're comfortable doing that, on to the next. Um, so it's one, two, three, four. Okay, you can see that there on the tab. Then the slight key change again, position shift up two frets, just like before. Um, and But this time it's, it's a little bit easier to learn, um, if, especially if you've already learnt that first jagged picking arpeggio, barring your pinky, you're doing the exact same manoeuvre on this D chord, um, as you can see there, 7th uh, fret with your index, 10th with your pinky, and then again that 10th fret bar with your pinky, going from the B string to the E string, and then repeating that a few times. 
playing those two together now will sound like this. Okay, a couple more times that. Fantastic. Nearly there now. There's only a couple more note, notes to learn and then it all wraps itself up. Okay. So that last little bit there, that over that G chord that you can see, seven, eight, eight, with your index and big finger, and then sliding back down, the new back to the original position, six, five, six, with your big and index, and then five on the E string with your index, and then another six and five there, and then you're back in to the original melody. It finishes off the same, if you have a listen. Just like that. So, here we go, from the top. I'll give a four count and then a three count as well, just to get you in. So it'd be like, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Fantastic. Okay, on to the chords now. Okay, for the chords, you need to learn five chords, all bar chords, um, fifth string bar chords, and sixth string bar chords. You need to learn how to play C, G, D, A7, D minor and F. So firstly, before I show the strumming pattern, I'm going to to just get you used, used to the order of the chords. So it goes like this. Two bars of C, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One bar of D, one bar of G. Now, two beats of C, two beats of A7, two beats of D minor seven, two beats of G, two beats of F, two beats of G, one beat of C. Okay, so that's the first half of the tune. The second, the chord progression is almost the same. I will I'll play the second half now. One bar of C, one bar of F, one bar of D, one bar of G. Now, two beats of F, two beats of A7, two beats of D minor seven, two beats of G, two beats of F, Two beats of G, finishing on the C. Fantastic. Okay, so now that you have those chords learned in the order that they should be, I'll show you the strumming pattern that I've chosen for, for this song. Loads of fun. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm picking the bass note Um, on the upstroke, as you can hear, um, as you can see those X's there on the tab, it's a finger muted. You're either barring your pinky or your third finger to, to get those three fives. Um, or you can, you can play with three individual fingers if you'd like. Um, I don't recommend it myself, but that's just a personal preference. 
um, whatever you're using for those three notes there to finger mute you simply leave your fingers on the frets and the respective strings that they are to be in but you just take the pressure off I'll show you there is my third finger playing the fifth fret of those three strings now if I just leave it on but take the pressure off that's how you get that totally awesome effect on the guitar very rhythmic very popular to doing that once you have that comfortably that will be the the majority of the strum throughout um, the song just with the chord changes added and for a little bit extra fun here on the chords that are played for a bar or more um, like the, the C and the D that you can see here I I'm alternating the bass notes between the 1 and the 5 um, but the chord remains the same. So this is what that sounds like. So if you can try that, um, that only happens a couple of times. There are a lot of instances in this song where the chords are changing too quickly to be able to change the bass note like that. Um, but for this bit here, it's just fun to do. It's not mandatory to go down to that bass note if you don't want to. You can just stay on the C. Either will work. Try that for me. The first four bars. That G chord there um, on the fourth bar also gets the opportunity to, to change the bass note as you can see there. But this time instead of going to a low fifth, it's going to the high fifth. If you're not 100% comfortable with the strumming pattern just yet, I will just cycle the song once um, w without, without it. I'm just going to play just empty bars with the chords to help yourself get through. So, one, two, three, four. 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 think we're there now so if you have this strumming pattern down now I'm going to play the chord strumming pattern at a at a slow speed and then I'll speed it up the second time here's how it goes Okay, so um, only, the only, you've probably noticed it yourself here, um, the rhythm for this entire thing does just go pretty much the entire time, with the exception of just a couple of bars here, the second half of the melody here, um, at the end of the first half you can see there, this one, two, three, four, And it happens again on that F chord two bars after. And it happens two bars again after that on G. Okay, so I'm going to cycle chords C to F just like this.
Okay, so if you're ready now, I'm going to count in. Um, it'll be about one, two, it'll be about this fast, okay? So it'll be like one, two, or one, two, three, four. Alrighty folks, uh, thanks very much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope you learned how to how to how to wrap your hands around a good sea shanty. Um, I'm gonna finish off now um, playing through the whole song four times as it progressively gets faster, just like any good jig. Hey!